Yo, what's going on guys? It's Gamer here, back again with another Dragon Ball Super episode review. Today we're reviewing episode 100. Episode 100 for Dragon Ball Super, and the title for this episode is Rampage, The Savage Berserker Awakens. And that, that, there it is, episode 100 of Dragon Ball Super, a show that started over two years ago, and a series that people didn't think was ever going to get to this point because of the whole retelling of the movies and such other things but here we are episode 100 of dragon ball super man let's go ahead and just talk about it so the episode begins off uh with piccolo master roshi tien and gohan talking about you know the the whole thing that happened in the last episode with krillin getting eliminated krillin you know shocking he got eliminated in the last episode they're talking about it but skip forward a little bit we see a couple of scenes of just Beerus and Champa kind of interacting with each other. Uh, Vegeta is getting pushed back by Botamo and Mageta, uh, of course, because we did last time we saw Vegeta, he was fighting Botamo and Mageta, of course, and he gets pushed back, and then we see a shot of Kaba or or Kabe, whatever, however you want to say his name. I d don't really mind which either either or. But he's walking towards Vegeta, and then these two guys decide to go walk towards uh, Kaba and try to, like, knock him off or whatever. And then one hit, and on each of the fucking dudes that charge at him, he knocks, he knocks him off the fucking stage. I thought that was really cool from, from Kaba, uh, because uh, I really like the Universe 6 Saiyans. I want to see more of them, especially after what happened with Khalifa and, and Kale. In this episode, I hope we see a little bit more of interactions between the two of those characters. But uh, Kaba is like wanting to fight Vegeta. He he refers to him as Master. I don't really know why he didn't really train him or anything. But he's wanting to fight Vegeta, and we do get a couple of shots of obviously them fighting each other, and then we get towards another scene of Hit using his time skip ability on uh, one of the, one of the other universe. I want to say. I want to say it's like universe three. I don't remember which uh, universe this uh, fighter is from. Uh, correct me in the comments uh, because I really just don't remember which universe this guy is from. But he uses the time skip to flick him off of the arena. I thought it was hilarious. Then we get another shot of Kale, you know, fighting uh, some fighter, of course, this fucking crab-looking motherfucker. Uh, he's pushing her back, and then uh, she runs back into Nopapa, or whatever his name was. I forget what his name is. The big pink sumo guy. Uh, he holds her by up the hair, and then she's just getting fucking wailed on. She's getting just punched in the fucking stomach, and she's not standing that much of a chance. Uh, she's about to get thrown off the arena, of course. Then Khalifa shows up and saves Kale, and... You know, she decides to transform into a Super Saiyan form, and then uh, she knocks off the pink sumo guy off of the arena, and that's basically the last of that. And then she goes to where Kale was after, you know, she got she got fucking wailed on with punches to the fucking stomach, right? And she's trying to, like, uh, give her some confidence, saying that, like, she believes in her, and she just needs to tap into that like inner power that she has and then she's like go beat up that guy and then she goes and points at Goku I thought that was I thought this was funny because um we get the scene of Goku actually fighting uh, a Yardradian a Yardradian from a different universe uh obviously and he's using the instantaneous movement or instant transmission into dub and I thought this was interesting I was looking forward to see the Yardradian use you know more of what he was able to do but Khalifa knocks him off I was really dis actually no he doesn't dis he doesn't knock him off he just uses instantaneous movement to just not get knocked off but then you know Khalifa is trying to talk to Goku and then she's trying to convince Goku to teach a teacher how to use uh, the Super Saiyan blue transformation and then Goku is basically just like no I'm not gonna teach you that she's like why and then he's like, I don't think you're necessarily ready for that, or or I don't think you can use it. Of course, she gets pissed off, and then she goes into her Super Saiyan form. 
the fight against Goku, and she actually goes into uh, a buff uh, or Super Saiyan form or Super Saiyan Grade 3. If you don't know what Super Saiyan Grade 3 is, basically it's just Super Saiyan but like really jacked and buffed up like Trunks did back in the Cell arc and Z. And this episode had a whole bunch of references to different uh, Dragon Ball Z movies, specifically Broly of course because Kale, but uh, it also had a different a couple. It also had a couple different homages to Z. Like obviously the Super Saiyan Grade Three transformation. She goes Grade Three, right? She charges at Goku, but doesn't land a hit, obviously, because she's slower. You know, Goku even tells her straight up, just you're not going to be able to hit me because you sacrifice speed for power, and she can't get up because she just she has no fucking strength to be able to lift herself self up. She goes back to Grade One. And then Goku's like, you should probably try to aim for this transformation. And then he goes to Super Saiyan Grade 5, or most commonly known as in the community, Super Saiyan 2. Of course, she gets all excited. She's like, I had gotten to this transformation before myself. I just didn't, I just didn't remember how to use it. Uh, she goes Super Saiyan 2, and this didn't bother me, but I wouldn't understand why people did get bothered by it. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but does she look better? in her Super Saiyan 2 hair than her normal hair in Super Saiyan hair. I don't know if that's just me, but I, for some reason, liked her Super Saiyan 2 hair better than her Super Saiyan 1 or her normal hair. And then Goku actually points out uh, that she might even be able to go Super Saiyan 3, but I, again, would understand why people would see, you know, it being kind of bullshit that she would be able to go Super Saiyan 2. But people have to understand that the Universe 6 Saiyans are much different from Universe 7, so you kind of have to, you know, give credit where it's due and forgive them. And so, of course, uh, both Super Saiyan 2s, um, Goku and Khalifa, you know, they're going at each other, they're blocking attacks, you know, she's impressed at the power of a Super Saiyan 2. And, you know, Khalifa, not Khalifa, Kale is kind of just standing there, kind of wanting to help out. She shoots a key blast at Goku trying to help out. Uh, Goku deflects it and he's like, you're annoying, go away. <laughs> uh, but then she's asking Khalifa, like, uh, like, is she a bother? Khalifa looks away, kind of just like, I guess, bothered at the fact that she wants to fight Goku, who's, you know, strong and Kale isn't transforming, so she can't be impressed by her. Uh, Kale starts crying, she's upset, and then of course, we all knew this was going to happen sooner or later in the episode. And she goes into her Berserk form. She transforms into her own unique transformation of Super Saiyan. And this is where... Uh, I, I was going to say this is where the episode kind of goes downhill for me. I'm not saying I don't like this episode. I really like this episode. Mainly because it showed off a lot of potential for Kale and Khalifa and Kava to a certain extent even though we didn't see much of him but it kind of bothered me and uh, if you didn't see uh, my video that I posted like uh, like way like back a couple months ago about why I hate Broly and my whole like opinion about uh, the, this quote female Broly or Kale's transformation that looks like Broly It'll make more sense if you did watch it. Uh, there will be, um, you'll be able to click on the screen at the end of the video that will take you towards the video. I'll link it down in the description, uh, as I always do. But in the episode, this is kind of where like my whole view of Kale and her Super Saiyan form kind of went downhill because she was so much like Broly. You know, she's she's in her Super Saiyan transformation, and before I actually continue on with what she was doing in the episode. Uh, we do see a scene of Khalifa getting like kind of shot back because of the intense power of Kale's power, and it actually uses his time skip to stop Kale like in mid place. And I didn't even think of this, like the fact that you know Hit is able is now shown to be able to use the time skip to be able to save his teammates from getting knocked with, knocked off the arena. That's pretty dangerous, and that's gonna come in handy for Universe Six. I was actually pretty impressed with Universe Six in this episode. And anyways, let's get back to the whole Kale situation. Uh, Vegeta's like, what the hell is that form? And then Kappa's like, oh yeah, that's fucking uh, Kale and stuff. And uh, Vegeta actually 
is like this must be like the origin of Super Saiyan. I don't remember what he said. It, it, they were trying to hide the fact that this is like the legendary Super Saiyan transformation without saying that it's legendary Super Saiyan. But that's basically what they were kind of getting at. And this is, like I said, where Kale's Super Saiyan transformation kind of falls downhill for me. She's charging at Goku, you know, and <laughs> she picks Goku up by his fucking ankle and starts like whamming him into the fucking ground like Hulk did in the Avengers movie. I hit my mic, I apologize. Um, but she, she's fucking whamming him into the ground and like Hulk did in the Avengers movie. I thought that was hilarious. And you know, she's charging at Goku and she's even saying Son Goku and I'll, in my head I'm just like, I'm, I'm just like, why do I hear Broly's voice saying Kakarot? <laughs> The whole time as I was watching the episode, I was just like, Kakarot! And I was like, why? I hate this. Leave me alone. Broly haunts me. Uh, she does the whole, like, finger face grab like Broly did. Um, and this is where something really kind of caught me off guard and I wasn't expecting it. Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue. He's powering up a f basically a full-powered Kamehameha. Kale is just walking towards this motherfucker, all pissed off, saying, Son Goku. She walks through a Super Saiyan Blue Kamehameha, just like Broly did in Broly Movie 1. And in terms of power scaling, and for all you power scalers out there in the community, this probably pissed you off a little bit, but Kale, basically people in the community called her months back before we had an official name for her, Female Broly. Right, walk through a key blast from Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Super Saiyan Blue Goku, Kamehameha. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't know. It kind of ticked me off a little bit, but of course I kind of got over it because everything else about this episode was absolutely fantastic. Uh, we get another shot of Kale. She kind of like is on top of like a mountain thing created on the arena because of her or whatever. And then she does uh, what Broly did back in um, Broly Movie 1 where she actually releases basically all of her key because she can't control her transformation, you know. This is why people are comparing her so much like Broly because the transformation itself and her attitude when she is in the form, it's so much like Broly and... A lot of people who aren't fans of Broly uh, are probably like irritated by it, but if you're a fan of Broly, I'm not saying don't watch the episode. I would say if you are a fan of Broly and you want to see Broly references and stuff like that, watch the episode. This is a excuse me. This is a really good episode, and I would recommend watching it. This is an amazing episode. And then we actually get a shot of a guy hiding behind a fucking rock, and then. He shoots off a fucking lasso like Wonder Woman and uh, ties up Kale and then of course it doesn't work and then he, uh, she knocks him off. Uh, Universe 11 had finally uh, lost a member uh, and obviously it, you, you know they lost a member because one of the Zenos actually on their pad had you know eliminated him. She's fucking screaming acting very Broly-ish. I'm getting pissed off at this point. Topo's like even her voice alone is this powerful. And then Jiren jumps off of his fucking rock, right? And he's like, I'll take this. And then he, sh he shoots a key blast towards Kale. And then li and it shoots her off into the fucking air, right? And then Jiren turns around, does like a little pose or whatever. And he's like, it's done. And then the key blast that he shoots off at Kale just explodes. And I'm just like, yes! Yes! I fucking... Oh man, that was that was really cool. I like Jiren a lot. That was really cool. Kale flies through the air. She's not in her berserker form or whatever anymore. Uh, Khalifa catches her and then hit notices Jiren, and he's probably a little bit intimidated because Goku in his Super Saiyan Blue form shoots off a Kamehameha, and she walks right through it. Jiren shoots off one key blast. And knocks her out of her fucking form. What in the hell? How are they gonna fucking deal with a dude that can do that? Kale, Khalifa, and Hit, they go off somewhere else to recuperate, I guess. 
And then it ends off with the cliffhanger of Son Goku and Jiren having a face-off. And that's, like I said, that's the end of the episode. Really good episode. I'm not going to say that it's it's not a good episode because of my opinions about, you know, Kale in this episode. Because other than that, you know, like her attitude and her mannerisms and Son Goku, you know, like, I like the episode. You know, I, I like seeing, you know, these, these female Saiyans in their Super Saiyan form in this tournament of power, you know, because this is the first time outside of Dragon Ball Heroes, which isn't technically canon, quote unquote, that we're seeing a female Super Saiyan, right? So I'm interested. I want to see more of Kale and Khalifa. If the series, or not the series, if the arc ends like, I, like I'm predicting how it's going to end out, uh, let me know if you want to see a video on like what I think might might actually happen. Um, but depending if the arc ends like how I think it's going to end, I hope we see more of these characters. I really, really do. Even if it's just like like a brief like little little mini arc or whatever, I want to see more. I want to see more interactions with these characters. I want to see even just a simple like episode just on these two characters by themselves outside of the tournament of power. I think a lot of people would probably have a high demand for that and I don't disagree I would I would really like to see that this episode if I were to rank it from 1 to 5 uh, definitely it's definitely like a 4.5 out of 5 uh, mainly because like obviously uh, like how I was saying I don't like Broly and how Kale is very Broly-ish Broly Broly-esque didn't, didn't, didn't like it per se but I got over it, of course, because of how well done the episode was. It was good. You should watch it. It's episode 100, of course. Dragon Ball Super has been around for over two years now. Not over two years, but it's been around for, for about two years. It's a good episode. You should watch it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. If you guys did enjoy the episode, or the, not the episode, but the video, uh, be sure to drop a like. And if you're brand new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button future content just like this. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.